to Shale from Waffle TV, sponsored by West Beer. Today we're here with the cast of It's Dark Outside. How are you guys today? Good, good thanks. Yeah, really thanks for having us. Please introduce yourselves. Uh, yeah, I'm Tim. I'm Chris. And I'm Ariel. And together, we're It's Dark Outside. Yeah, we're, the, we're the creators and performers of, of the show. Brilliant. So tell us a bit about your show. Well, um, it's a show that has uh, puppets and masks and animation. Uh, it's about an old man uh, who wanders out into the wild at sunset, kind of gets swept up in an epic western of sorts, and, uh, and he's on the run from a mysterious tracker man uh, that's trying to hunt him down. Uh, yeah, it's a, it's a yeah, yeah, it's a um, much like uh, some other shows that we do, like um, Alvin Sputnik, which we're also doing here. Um, it's a we like to say it's a really it's a fun show about some pretty sad uh, about a sad topic, um, and so we like to think it's a. Uh, yeah, it's a, it's a really joyful and heartfelt piece, but um, also quite moving. Um, yeah. So, how did you guys get into doing this kind of performances? Uh, did you sort of we, when we create work, we just kind of use whatever things are in our tool belt. Yeah. So you know, uh, we we like to bring in anything that we learn or. or can use to tell a story, yeah, anything okay. that's at our fingertips, and, and to use quite a bit of animation, so we use that, and we've um, got all developed skills in puppetry, and we've kind of played with making puppets as well, so we use that as much as possible, and also just anything that's kind of around at the time we're creating, we pick up and usually end up in the show. For instance, there's a bunch of stuffing, of um, pillow stuffing yeah. that's ended up in our show because we were making a puppet, and the stuffing was all around the space, and, and so we just picked it up one day and it made its way into our um, our devising, and now it's in the show. And it's quite a uh, central uh, image image uh, <laughs> medium that we use. Yeah. It's yeah, I was going to ask about that because I saw the trailer where they sort of made the thought bubbles and everything. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Really well, so. yeah. Um, I mean, speaking about how we make things, I mean that's that that's a still a really clear, vivid moment for me when we we improvise a lot just with stuff that's lying around, and that was a really clear moment when we were because um, the the old man character has uh, dementia, and so we're, and we're trying to find ways of communicating that without being um, naff or um, too heavy-handed, and then when we started. Just playing with these thought, um, these things coming out of his head, like in, in front of the mirror, like look like thought bubbles, and just improvising. You know, Chris would bring one out, and then another one out, and then I'd bring a third one out, and then um, uh, yeah, Ariel start trying to chase them, and it was like a really uh, because really I'm the old man. Yeah, 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 yeah. And the three of us, we decided that I was the most like an old suitable man. for yeah. an old man. Well, yeah. So we um we had this old man mask that um. That I made um, out of latex and things oh, you like made that. It? Yeah, yeah, wow. yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, we made, it's kind of creepy, I made just the, like um, this. <laughs> made the mask and the puppet head out in a similar way. We were made out of clay and then um, made a plaster cast and then uh, latex mold and then painted it. Um, but uh, yeah, so so we really just loved this image of um, this old man chasing his his um these cloud bubbles, uh, these clouds, because it was like a really uh, I guess playful and imaginative way um, of, of dealing with a pretty tricky topic. Um, so that kind of sums up the way that we like to work on things, I guess. So did you do a lot of research in the food bench and everything like that? Because I heard that um, somebody came up and said that you'd really captured sort of the essence of dementia. Oh. Yeah, really well. So did you sort of, especially with you, sort of movements and everything, did you do a lot of research? Or? Yes. We, uh, Tim's grandparents had dementia, and um, I also have grandparents who have dementia. Um, so we have personal experience with it as well. Um, and, and Tim's mum uh, gave us a lot of reading material. She's a counsellor. Yeah, my mum's a, yeah, a counsellor, so she, and she'd done a lot of research into... Um, uh, into this this um, point that happens in, uh, in 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 aging, like there's various stages, and one of the last stages that you go through, um, apparently, is um, uh, I guess a point of reflecting back on your life, and you're either left in a place of of um, I guess uh, of satisfaction or despair. Like if there's things that are unresolved, um, that uh, you can uh, you know die with feeling like you, you did something bad that you didn't get to make up for, and uh, actually, sometimes with um, people, uh, the dementia patients um, that have such vivid um, visualizations of what's happening, it it can be kind of useful. 
for them to have such visual ways of trying to cope with these things that they haven't quite resolved. There was this beautiful story that Ariel read about, about this um, dementia patient who was just all day, every day, whacking the table as hard as he could with his hand, you know, causing all these bruising, annoying everyone in the home. Um, and then this, uh, this, um, yes. this nurse worked with him with this validation technique and eventually he, he said to her, I'm hitting him good, aren't I, Dad? And they found out that when he was young, he used to help his dad build things. And it was like this, his way of, um, so he was, he was there helping his dad build stuff. And as soon as she, she was able to validate his, uh, visualization. his visualization, he stopped doing it, was able to move on past that. and. Um, yeah, so all, there was lots of really fascinating um, stories in the research that we did. The show is in no way a biopic or an um, educational show about dementia. It was just, the topic was just so rich and complicated and talking to a lot of people after the show who've had, who've been um, affected by um, Alzheimer's or dementia in some way. It's a, it's a relatively, it's a quite an uncomfortable situation for people because there's these people that you know and love and they don't know you anymore, they, they're losing all their faculties and they're losing a lot of their dignity and it's just really uncomfortable and people don't feel right or they feel weird talking about it so we found that it's a really good, I think, release for people who've had that experience with it. But it's also not a show that you have to have, you know, uh, we wanted to be that make sure that it wasn't like four people who have been affected by it, but I think there's certainly a extra uh, layer there if you've been affected by it. So apart from that, the fringe and all your thoughts to you, what have you got planned for us next year? Yeah. Well, oh, um, yeah, so it's, it's, been, it's been a busy couple of months, actually. Yeah. Um, so this show, it's Dark Outside, is going to be touring uh, around Australia next year. Mm -hmm. um, so we're doing three months of that and um, possible other tours elsewhere. Yeah. Um, this tour, we're going to Pittsburgh in yeah. October. In the US. In the US. Um, and then possible tours about other places next year. Um, the three of us and another person and a few others are going to start working on another show, uh, which we recently um, got some money to make, which is lovely. Um, we're going to try and do this massive, fun, extravagant yeah. show. So just before we came here, we finished uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, working on this large scale, interactive, um, it's one of my favorite projects I've worked on. It, it's, it destroys my brain, um, but it's, uh, yeah, it's a really large scale interactive show. I'd love to find a way to bring it to the fringe in the future. Um, needs a really great venue and a, a lot of logistical um, yeah, negotiating. Um, so there's that, that show, I'm working on another solo uh, duo puppet show at the end of the year in Perth that I hope to bring back to, to, I hope to, bring to Edinburgh Fringe at some stage. We're pretty chockers, um, pretty full. Eight months, eight months, yeah. yeah. yeah which much. is which is very great, and um, we're in a really lucky position. Yeah, in that yeah, really so, lucky. Well, thank you very much for coming to today. No problem. Thank you for having us. Um, so Michelle, you've been watching Waffle TV, sponsored by West Beer.